We talk a lot in diversity fields about uh, intersectionality. So uh, the queer community doesn't have federally protected rights. It is often seen as an invisible community or more invisible sometimes. And uh, that makes uh, additional layers to wrestle with on how we do inclusion that is not threatening uh, and how we make a climate welcoming to all. We think about the populations that we're serving. The demographics in the United States in particular are changing over time. And I think it's, it's natural for us to think about our institutions and to think about the importance of having multiple vantage points within IT organizations or colleges and universities more broadly. One really concrete example that's come up um, recently has to do with preferred names. So um, allowing the, uh, creating our systems so that our students can change uh, preferred uh, first name or preferred name, thinking about gender identities, uh, thinking about preferred pronouns. So um, having staff members or others in our community that have expertise in that um, with uh, transgender individuals um, will help us think about the systems that we want to create to support you know, our current populations of students. I think the struggle in the 21st century academy and IT is how do we both recognize the uniqueness of individual communities at the same time having a kind of robust continuum where all are valued and we can reckon with privilege and the lack thereof in complex ways. So, uh, for example, in a queer community, it can often on a campus, if it's a predominantly white institution, look very white, but not be critically conscious about its whiteness and the race privilege that's with that. Um, so there can be work that that community can do, and doing that work broadens its ability to form coalitions with other diverse you know, groups on campus, faculty, staff, students. That seems to be the work we're doing now in the 21st century in academe and need to do more effectively. Families that have some non-traditional elements, if you will, um, perhaps same-sex couples with children, how might they need to approach the community in terms of looking for schools or, or um, other people within the community with which they might connect? That would be helpful as well. So um, thinking about career issues that relate to if someone's coming out as transgender and they're thinking about pronoun uh, issues or changing their preferred pronouns, um, making sure that there are people that they can talk to and think about even if within the IT organization there not, may not be expertise in that per se, but if there are people with expertise on campus. So within the constituent group, we also talked about the degree to which gender and sexuality centers, they have a variety of names on our campuses, but if they're also available to employees of the college as well as students, or in HR organizations where they may have similar expertise. So LGBTQIA issues, um, names, Comfortability with names, pronoun usages, uh, inclusivity, and you know, as far as restrooms, those kind of things on all levels make a huge difference to both the way in which a diverse uh, uh, staff at the university feels included and valued, and also the the role modeling it does for students we have working in our units, for students in classrooms, it sets a tone uh, um, for the campuses. Uh, and, and IT units for diversity that's very important. Uh, we all are in positions as we're in our work lives and our academic institutions where we're either occupying identities that we're really familiar with, but we need to be open to the fact that we need to be able to speak to other identities. And that can be really challenging, whether it has to do with race or ethnicity or other sexual orientations or gender identities. And just to be uh, generous with one another as we engage in those conversations um, and to be open to learning which uh, is very challenging and very rewarding and uh, sometimes a little scary, but so worth it.